You can say that. Be easier than shaking. Good evening or good morning. What time is it? Good afternoon. Okay, I'm here to debate th that the situations where laparoscopic repair is better suited than open. These are my disclosures. So if I can get an audience poll, first question, uh, how many of you have actually performed a laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair? Okay, excellent. How many of you consider yourselves an expert in performing the same repair? Okay, very good. So I'll give you my conclusion and then uh, we can start from the beginning after that. My conclusion is laparoscopic surgery is a skill. Advanced laparoscopic surgery is for the skilled only. And laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair, if performed by the skilled, is suited for almost any situation with at least as good, if not better, outcomes than open. So uh, I think the VA trial is the best trial to kind of show, and that's what Dr. Veller alluded to, that expert surgeons uh, do very well with laparoscopic surgery. This is the trial um, that Dr. Fitzgibbon reviewed, open uh, mesh versus laparoscopic mesh repair, almost all TEP, uh, where about 1,000 patients per arm were randomized. My disclosure is I was actually a resident when this trial was going on at the VA, and uh, like Dr. Veller, I did see my attendings kind of try and figure out how to do this. Uh, and I was among the surgeons that was um, following up on these patients. So really the issue is uh, the data between the results from the experienced surgeon versus the inexperienced surgeon. And the VA trial very nicely showed that if you had done 250 cases or more, uh, you were considered an experienced surgeon, and your recurrence rate was very low, 5.1%. Uh, whereas the inexperienced surgeon that had uh, documented having done at least 25 cases and turned in a video in order to be allowed to be a PI on the study uh, had a recurrence rate of 12.3%, and that was statistically significant. When it came to recurrent hernias, when experienced surgeons uh, performed it laparoscopically versus open, clearly laparoscopy was superior to open. So the result is that when performed by experienced sur surgeons, lap laparoscopy is superior to open. It has similar or lower recurrence rates for either unilateral or recurrent hernias with shorter recovery time and less complications overall. So really what I'm trying to say is that experience counts. We know that in cardiac surgery, the more experienced the, patient, the surgeon, the better the outcome. Pancreatic surgery, high volume centers have a better outcome in terms of resectability of, of the cancer. Prostate surgery, the freedom from recurrence is much improved with patient, with, by surgeons who are experienced in the, in the prostatectomy. Even eye surgery, the higher the volume, the, better, the lower the recurrence, the lower the complications. So I think if you're going to do laparoscopic surgery, certainly start by doing the easy cases and get over the humps. <laughs> Sounds much better with, uh, with sound. Uh, once you get over the humps, really uh, what you can do is then really widely apply laparoscopic hernia for uh, inguinal hernia repairs. We've shown you uh, with the other uh, talks that the major benefit of laparoscopy is the short recovery time. This is the data from the VA trial, which shows that early recovery time is better. I tell my patients, you expect to be on pain medications for about one day and back to work uh, in about three days. Also, I offer it to athletes, uh, busy executives and professionals who really do not want to take much time off and want to go right back to work. Day laborers who can't afford to miss time off work, uh, I do offer laparoscopic surgery to them. And uh, patients with bilateral hernias who would like to have both fixed, assuming that they can undergo general anesthesia, I, I do offer and strongly offer laparoscopic surgery to these patients. Also, we know that there's less chronic pain. In fact, if you try not to use any tacks or staples and either uh, use glue, fibrin glue, or what I do is I use nothing, um, and, and uh, do a TEP procedure without any fixation, uh, those patients have very little risk of any pain. Uh, you won't have pain from the tacking, and the risk of neuropathic pain is minimal. This is a trial of showing staplers versus fibrin glue as the, as the fixation, 
and 20% of the cases of pain were from uh, the stapler and not from the fibrin glue. The foreign body sensation is an issue with open mesh, especially if you choose meshes that are heavier weight or uh, very bulky, such as the plug. And specifically for very thin patients or muscular patients, uh, I do recommend laparoscopic repair because they're less likely to feel the mesh or have um, a sensation of a foreign body uh, in the groin. And we've already sh seen on multiple studies that, that there's less recurrence when laparoscopic repair uh, is performed after a recurrent inguinal hernia. You know, wound complications are not common with open surgery, but when it does happen, it can be devastating, and you have to go back into the groin, uh, and if the mesh is involved with the infection, and remove the mesh, and that can be a very difficult procedure. And when you have morbidly obese patients, that increases your wound infection risk. And honestly, do you really want an incision way down there underneath the panis? I would say no. So there are some myths about when you cannot do laparoscopy, and with time, I think th these are being proven wrong, similar to laparoscopic cholecystectomy, where you know, cholecystitis was considered a relative contraindication to performing it. We now routinely do that. Laparoscopic appendectomy, uh, perforated appendicitis, used to be a relative contraindication, and we now routinely and widely apply laparoscopic appendectomy for perforation. I think uh, ingual hernias are in the same realm. It used to be that if you had an appendectomy scar or lower abdominal scar that a laparoscopic hernia repair would not be recommended. Uh, certainly it can be done and can be done safely. Uh, if the surgery is, is uh, distant, you can consider a tap or you can just go straight for a tap. Uh, these results have been shown to have a low conversion rate um, and really no other complications besides a conversion. Women who've had C-sections, also that scar tends to heal very well, and a TEP or a TAP can be completed. I'd recommend starting with a TAP early in your, uh, in your experience. Now, prostatectomy, the data that Dr. Fitzgibbon showed was all old data from 2003, 2004. The current data, 2009, 2010, two, um, and 11, all show, and we are showing as well in our own institution, that with the advent of robotic prostatectomy, really, uh, Performing the prostatectomy is not at all hindered by having had a previous uh, hernia repair, number one. And number two, um, having had a prostatectomy, especially robotic, is no longer a contraindication for performing a laparoscopic hernia repair. So uh, my recommendations, though, are that you have to be careful because the bladder can be stuck up to the uh, anterior abdominal wall. So the dissection, the preperitoneal space, should be done uh, carefully or if you plan to use a, a balloon dissector, it should be done gently. Um, but a tap or even a gentle tap can be done, and I ret routinely offer that to my patients. With regard to previous laparotomy, the group in Strasbourg uh, showed that if you've had open prostatectomy even, uh, or prior lower abdominal surgery, there may be a need for conversion. There was some bleeding from the epigastric vessels, uh, probably from scar tissue, but uh, prostatectomy and uh, lower abdominal surgery was not a, a contraindication to successfully performing ingrow hernia. And although early s studies, there was actually one case report where they had to go in open for the prostatectomy and abort and could not perform the prostatectomy, could not offer surgery to a patient with prostate cancer, and they had to rely on radiation because of the severe inflammation from the laparoscopic mesh placement. That has no longer shown to be uh, true. The, the newer studies show, especially with robotic surgery, that is perfectly feasible um, to perform this, and there have been um, very rare reports now of prostatectomy being aborted because of severe inflammation, and all were able to perform the prostatectomy. The key is the pelvic lymph node dissection is more difficult and, and sometimes cannot be completely performed. Now, that is not a life... Uh, that, is, that does not prolong the patient's life. It's more of an uh, indication of uh, prognosis, but the lymphadenectomy alone does, is not a life-saving procedure for prostate surgery, um, but it is uh, something that is uh, difficult to perform after having had an inguinal hernia repair because the mesh does tend to lie, lay low and over the vein. So I think uh, basically experience counts. Uh, if you are experienced, you can widely apply it and uh, 
The only example I did not give was that of the large, massive scrotal hernia, and I think in the future a hybrid procedure using laparoscopy um, uh, can be performed even in the large scrotal hernias. This is what happens when you're an experienced surgeon. Two out of three wheels available. Thank you very much.